What is up everyone? Welcome back to New Frontiers Gameplay Update 7.33. This patch is so big that I absolutely had to make two videos just talking about it. And in this video, we're going to be talking about every single hero change, item change, neutral creep change, neutral item change, basically the things that I'm not going to say impact the game the most because these map changes and and like area changes and outposts, sh watchers, like so many cool changes. If you didn't catch that, go back to the first video. I talk about everything uh, when it comes to like the, the new map, right? The new map and uh, major gameplay changes. Now we're going to talk about, as I said, items, heroes, and so on. All right, and before we get into all these crazy changes in 7.33, I just want to let you guys know that there's so much in this patch, literally so much in this patch, that I'm gonna be making, I mean, I wanna cover everything here on YouTube. I wanna make a video for every single new item, hero, blah, 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 but there's just too much. I can't post all of that on YouTube and the videos on YouTube need to be a bit higher quality and longer. Over on the website, I'm gonna cover every little niche thing over the next few weeks, probably month with how big this patch is. So if you're interested in getting ahead on the meta, winning more ranked games because you have better information than your peers, then you should sub to the website. It's 50% off right now using code DOTA733. Yeah, I feel like I'm some like TV proc there. You know what I mean? So that's the promo code. Go check it out, guys. Go sub to the website. It's literally so cheap, way less than a Netflix subscription. And I'm gonna be posting high quality content, getting you ahead on the patch. So I'll see you there. All right, so what Valve did different this patch is they have hero highlights. They specify which heroes got the biggest changes. And so let's start there. Let's start with Muerta. Muerta got added to captain's mode and her ricochet fear got nerfed pretty hard at level one. The calling, which is one of the most busted abilities in the game, like straight up, I hate this spell. Silence duration decreased, but it's not too bad. It's still three seconds at max, pretty long. And the duration still scales up back up to 10. So I will admit, I think this ability is still completely broken. If you don't know what it does, it summons a ring that slows you by 30%, which is way too much. And in the laning stage, it's impossible to fight against this spell. You get stuck, you can't move, you get kited too hard, you get feared back into it. It's just too annoying. This hero is so obnoxious. And I think it's good as a support and a core. Pierced Veil, which is uh, her ultimate, now upgradable by Aghanim Shard, grants 30% spell life steal for the duration of Pierce the Veil, which works because her right clicks become magical. Murta permanently gains 2% spell of amplification every time she kills an enemy hero during Pierce the Veil. Wow, that's actually quite significant. You, you can build up a lot of spell amp. You know, let's say you get 10 kills, that's 20% just permanent spell amp for not that much gold, but I don't think you're gonna buy this early because you need right click items and BKB and so on, but it's not bad. Definitely a pretty cool shard. Oh, or if they die within 925 units. So you can get way more than 20% because assists, even if you don't get the assist, you can just straight up get it still. Parting shot, new ability granted by Aghanim Scepter. Wow, that's a lot of effort from Valve to make a new spell. I'm, I'm not being sarcastic. Morta shoots an allied or enemy hero in their soul, separating it from the physical body. Oh, this is what they teased in the trailer. The soul is pushed 150 units on separation and is untargetable, muted, disarmed, and invulnerable. So you can't do anything to it. The body is for the duration and has 50% damage reduction. After this effect, the soul is forcibly returned to the body, which applies a strong dispel, removing negative buffs, debuffs, and stuns. The soul survives until the end of the effect, and even if the body dies. It does not deal damage to allies, and Morta can't target herself, but it does deal 300 damage. Okay, I'm a little bit confused exactly what this does. I can't tell. The body is stunned for the duration and has 50% damage reduction. So you can stun someone for four seconds but they have 50% damage reduction. And then they take 300 damage when it comes back. I mean, a four second stun is a four second stun at the end of the day. So can you pick this up at some point? Yeah, do I think you're gonna buy this early? No, but it's a pretty cool build on support, right? You can go something like Blink Ags and definitely had a lot of impact setting up on people. Four second stun, once again, as I said, it's a four second stun. And they just nerfed every stun in the game, but it seems like they didn't count this one perhaps. So uh, maybe it's good. And her level 10 talent got nerfed a bit. Okay, Clinks. Base damage increased from 1521 to 1925. What? It was that low? Searing Arrow's ability removed and he got one base strength. Strafe, new basic ability. This is the old ability. Clinks and his burning skeleton archers and 1200 AOE gain bonus attack speed and attack range. The attack speed bonus is massive at 100 up to 220 for Clinks and 50% for the skeletons. Okay. Attack range buff is 200 for Clinks and the skeletons. And the duration is 3.5. So very similar to the old Clinks uh, strafe. Very, very similar. Casting Strafe does not break Skeleton Walk Invisibility. Okay, uh, pretty short cooldown at max level and not too much mana. So not very good for the laning stage, I would say, considering you don't have Searing Arrows to pair with this now. Now you have Tar Bomb, new basic ability. 
Unit targeted. Clinks throws a projectile that deals 4, 40, 60, 80, 100 magic damage on impact. Commanding Clinks and all of his burning skeleton archers in range to attack the target. The 275 radius area around the target is covered in tar for 5 seconds. Any enemy that walks across the tar gets slowed and receives physical damage from attacks. Oh, bonus physical damage and quite a lot of it, up to up to 45 physical damage from attacks by Clinks or his burning skeleton archers. Effect persists for 2.5 seconds after leaving the area, which is pretty damn long, and it affects buildings. Oh wow, so you can siege incredibly fast. This hero is gonna be a hell of a rat. You can do 45 bonus physical damage with 220 bonus attack speed. You're gonna shred buildings. And the cooldown goes down to four seconds. Oh my, the cooldown is 7654. Why is it such a short cooldown? <laughs> Okay, so you basically spam the hell out of this ability. You use it to farm, you use it to fight, you use it to take towers. It sounds pretty damn strong. Death Pact, now a basic ability. What? It's like the old clanks. Wait, right? I think. No? I don't know. It has one charge at level 1 and 2, and two charges at level 3 and 4, and has a 40 second charge or store time. Now creates a burning skeleton archer in place of a killed creep, okay? Only one skeleton from this ability can exist at a time. That's not very much. The skeleton hits to kill 3, skeleton damage 20% of Clinks' damage, skeletons deal 25% less damage to buildings, okay. Heal and bonus health is now 125, 200, 275, 350. The mana cost is now only 60, and the creep max level is 4, 5, 6, 6. So you can't just eat a big creep at level 1, but you can eat certain big creeps at level 2. This means that you get a good amount of sustain in the lane as Clinks, right? Because you can just cast this on lane creeps. That's going to give you a burning uh, army skeleton that can harass opponents, and it's going to heal you for 125, making Clinks quite a bit of a better laner. I say that, but he lost his best laning ability in Searing Arrows. Tar Bomb does seem like a decent laning spell, as it slows enemies and sits in an area for 5 seconds on a 7 second cooldown, and lets you hit them for 15 bonus damage, and you can put it on a creep wave, giving you 15 bonus damage, meaning you can last it incredibly easily. So yeah, that's that's pretty cool. And then Skeleton Walk is now an ultimate ability. The duration is increased from 25, 30, 35, 40 to 35, 40, 45, but you don't really want that much duration. So I don't know if that's a good thing. Bonus movement speed is 30, 45, 60. Mana cost increased per level. Cooldown is 18 seconds flat, and now summons 2, 3, 4, up to 4 burning skeleton archers. Only one pack of skeletons from this ability can exist at a time, so you can't get 8 by stacking your skeleton walks. It's a bit of a nerf, kind of. And Burning Barrage, your old Q, is now granted by Aghanim Shard. Also douses enemy in tar bomb slow, which is pretty strong. The cooldown, however, is 22 seconds flat. The range is 850, but the damage per arrow is 65. And man, that is a really strong thing to have as just your Aghanim Shard. So if Clinks, okay, here's what I think about Clinks. Maybe Tar Bomb is gonna make laning playable because you're gonna get a lot of damage on the creeps by Tar Bombing the creep wave. It's gonna allow you to shove in the wave and just play very aggressive. However, Clinks' problem, it tends to be his bad base stats, which has not changed. Without Searing Arrows, if you wanna hit someone, you're gonna pull Creep Aggro. That's a big problem for a, a squishy low movement speed range here like Clinks. So without that, it's gonna be very hard to harass people as clings. That's a big problem. And Death Pact in the lane, maybe it's better than I think. I can't really tell. The heal and bonus health is now flat. The Death Pact doesn't seem to give you damage, which is weird, because then how does this hero hit that hard? Does it just hit hard with Strafe, Tar Bomb, and eventually the Shard? It's definitely a little bit odd, I'm not gonna lie. Maybe you're supposed to consider buying the Ags now that the Ags works with Strafe and Tar Bomb. So there's a lot of potential in some sort of like I don't want to say utility clinks, but this hero, I don't know, it's weird. I, I can't even really fathom how to play this hero right now, and I don't want to spend too much time on it, but this hero is going to require a full video just breaking down the different builds you can go when I do some research and do it for you guys. Because currently, I'm not going to, I don't want to theory craft too much. That would take way too damn long. Arc Warden used to create a perfect clone of himself, but now he does more. All Tempest Devil's abilities are replaced with Tempest versions of Arc Warden's abilities. The upheaval has attuned Arc Warden to the Ancients. When playing on the Dire side, Arc Warden will have the Tempest abilities by default, and his Tempest double will have its normal abilities. Oh, that's very weird. This condition is temporary and will go away once Zet adapts to the new paradigm. Very odd. Okay, so Tempest version provides higher damage but lower movement speed penalty. It's a lot more damage though, but it's a lot less slow. Oh, that's pretty cool. So if you don't know what I'm talking about, basically if you're the Tempest version of Arc Warden, uh, your Flux does up to 95 damage per second from 60 damage per second. However, the slow is nearly half at all levels. It's less than half at level 1, but actually slightly more than half at max. 
which isn't terrible. I think you prefer the damage, but maybe the lack of slow on it makes it hard to set up spark wraiths, so I'm not exactly sure. The Tempest version of Magnetic Field provides 150 attack range, for range heroes only, adds 20, 40, 60, 80 magic damage to attacks made by allies from the field as an increased duration. 80 magic damage for eight seconds with 150 bonus range? I mean, you don't get attack speed, I understand, but that seems like a lot of damage for eight seconds with 150 attack speed. It's like tag team on crack. Tempest version has a shorter activation delay instead of two seconds at one second, so it's gonna really hit you quick. It's a faster moving wraith by a lot, longer slow duration by 0.5 seconds at max, which is kind of a lot, but it does not that much less damage actually. I'm not gonna lie, the Tempest version seems better by quite a margin. Maybe I'm capping, but this Tempest version does a lot of damage. Even though the spark rate technically does less damage, it's way easier to hit. It's not even remotely close. They also buff the cooldown of Tempest Double from 60 to 56, 50 to 48, and then the same 40 at max. So major buffs to Arc Warden, uh, I think. These Tempest versions seem very strong. Question is, can you afford a max magnetic field on Tempest Arc Warden? I think the answer is maybe an eight second duration of 80 magic damage. Sounds pretty good for farming and it's very strong for ganking. And the problem is you have very limited lockdown so it's going to be a bit weird to build around the Tempest version. People are going to have to figure that out. They also changed the uh, the talents a lot. Oh, and at okay, so the most notable talent that Arc Warden got is at level 25, he gets no damage penalty distance for Tempest Double, which means in the late game, you can shred people again with that split pushing Arc Warden, right? You can pick up a couple of Rapiers, a Daedalus, a Blink, and a Hex, and you can just kind of run around the map with Tempest Doubles, killing people from across the map. So late game Obnoxious Arc Warden is basically completely back. Then we have Medusa. All right, so Medusa. Base strength decreased from 17 to 0. <laughs> strength gain decreased from 1.5 to 0. Intelligence gain increased from 3.4 to 3.7. Okay. Mana cost decreased on Mystic Snake from 140 to 80, 100, 120, 140. Okay, so that just seems like a straight up buff. No other real changes. Ability reworked on Mana Shield. Now a passive ability. Medusa starts with one level of Mana Shield. Okay, no matter what and the ability can be upgraded to level 5. Okay, Creates a shield that absorbs 98% of incoming damage in exchange for mana. Increases base mana. Bonus mana 200, 225, 250, 275, or 300. Damage per point of mana. 2, 2.3, 2.6, 2.9, 3.2. That's a lot. Now if a hero has mana shield ability, their mana bar will be visible to enemies. I guess that is like kind of referring to Medusa and Rubik. I think maybe Morphling, I guess. Now also absorbs HP loss type damage. Oh, I know what that means. Okay, it, it, it's certain abilities would just like drain her health, like um, like Necro's uh, Heartstopper would go through Mana Shield, I'm pretty sure. So, okay, and they nerf Stone Gaze. I don't even fully understand what this means. You have no strength, but you basically take all of your damage as mana. So don't you just get like destroyed by any mage now, even harder than before? Like you get completely annihilated by any mage? <laughs> like, you really can't play against Mana Burn, I think. I'm pretty sure you, like, really can't play against Mana Burn as Medusa. But if they don't have Mana Burn, maybe it's the best hero in the game as it reduces 98% of damage. That's a lot of reduction. Alchemist, one of my favorite heroes in the game. Acid Spray, cast point improved, cooldown decreased, making it much better at max level. Uh, mana cost decreased as well, and the duration, oh, but the duration was decreased, not by a lot. Damage per second also increased uh, by five at all levels. So big buffs to Acid Spray, like huge buffs to Acid Spray. Big, 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 big buffs. Okay, much, much better ability. Three seconds cooldown at max. I mean, that's, that's like massive. And it does five more damage at level one, pretty important. Max stun duration on your stun. Okay, nerf because of the overall nerfs. Now an innate ability. Grievel's Greed is an innate ability. It's a passive. Max gold per kill rescaled from 15, 18, 21, 24 to 18 flat. And the bonus rune multiplier rescaled to two flat. What do you mean you get Grievel's as a passive? That sounds heinously broken. New passive ability. So what, it just gets Grievel's Greed? I mean, yes, you might be saying, oh, but you know, like you get level two Grievous Greed, but you can't get it up to max level. However, you, you don't have to skill Grievous Greed, which means you just get level two Grievous Greed and you can take Acid Spray and your stun, making you a way better laner and still have 
this broken ability. And you get a new ability, which is a basic passive. Attacks apply a stacking debuff. So like Drow's uh, Shard, reducing movement speed by 3-4-5%, status resist by 3-4-5%, so it's very good with attack speed. Applying a new stack refreshes the duration, hero has no effect on buildings or roche. So is Alk just broken? The answer is yes. Like, absolute. It just gets a free ability now. I mean, yes, Grievous Greed is worse, but it's not that big of a deal. I'm pretty sure they also buffed the HP region on your ult at level 2 and 3. And they also gave you a, a 15 talent damage per Grievous Greed stack increased from 1.5 to 3. Which means you can get... How much damage is that? Like 60? <sighs> I'm telling you guys right now, Alk might be the best hero in Dota. Huh? If I'm reading what I'm thinking I'm reading, which every time you hit someone, they lose 6% status resist. Your stun and every stun that is casting on the person you're hitting is going to be ridiculous. Like, way too large. The max stacks is 11. That is 66% status resist reduction on max hits. Now, 11 hits is a lot, but obviously you can build around attack speed on Alk. Works with your ult, and it certainly works with this talent damage per Grievous Greed stack at 15 being double. Ogre is too dumb to be an intelligence hero, so he isn't anymore. <laughs> Primary attribute change to strength. That's funny. I always thought he was a strength hero. He got way more strength gain. He has no int, no intelligence. Always has zero intelligence, always. His base mana was increased from 75 to 120. His base damage was dropped by about 10. That's pretty crazy. It was actually by 10. Dumb lock, new innate ability. What is an innate ability? Is that like a passive? You just get it? Does that, it's like similar to the Grievous Greed? Oh, wait, so it's just part of your hero. That's crazy. Max intelligence is zero. Ogre Magi receives six points of maximum mana and 0 0.03 mana regen per point of strength. So you build a lot of strength. Each 20 points of strength also increases multicast chance by 1%. Only affects multipliers over 0%, so the four times cast chance won't trigger on level one. Okay. Stun duration decreased on both of your spells. Wow. So, I mean, this seems like probably a buff, right? Because you can just become really tanky by stacking strength and stacking strength inherently gives you a mana pool now. So, uh, Maybe a massive buff. I don't really fully understand it. I'm not going to claim to. We'll have to make a full another video on that. Every single one of these heroes on this list is going to need a video. I'm going to have the busiest week of work in my entire life. My god, make sure you're subscribed to the channel because no joke, I'm going to make a video covering practically everything in depth. Going to make sure you guys really understand you know, how to get ahead on the meta. And over on the website as well, which is currently 50% off, you can use the code in the description, uh, which I mentioned earlier in the video. You can use that as well to get 50% off. So make sure you guys go sub to the website because I'm going to be posting insane amount of guides to help you out on the patch there as well. All right, now let's get into the other hero changes. I guess those were the major ones, but honestly, like I'm looking at Abaddon right now, and this seems like quite a few changes as well. So maybe they made big, big changes to not only the, what was it, six heroes that they mentioned above. Maybe there's even way more. All right, Abaddon is now a universal hero. It seems like for every universal hero, basically what they're doing is that they're hardcore nerfing the base damage because you get a ton of damage from stats. If you don't know how it works, I mentioned it in the previous video. If you're a universal hero, for every stat, you get 0.6 damage. So let's say you buy an Iron Branch. Instead of getting one damage, if you're a strength hero, you will get 1.8 damage because you get three total stats and you get 60% of that three total stats as damage. So basically, let's say your hero has, you know, a good amount of starting strength. You are going to get a lot of damage. So basically, kind of what I'm seeing here is that uh, you're not going to have as much base damage. But if you stat up, let's say you buy an item like Crown, like Drums, these items are going to give you a criminal amount of damage, potentially too much. Maybe this is a little bit messed up by Valve, I don't know, because in my head, being able to buy stats and convert stats to damage is maybe a little bit too good. Like 1.8 is nearly doubling what the average hero gets. However, you start with a lot less damage, so that's how they're trying to balance it. We'll see how it plays out. Abaddon, now considered a damage barrier, stacks additively with other damage barriers. I don't know exactly what that means. Maybe we'll cover that in another line, but uh, okay. Pipe will get broken first or something. I don't really know. I don't I don't really know what this means, actually. I'm not, I'm not sure. Cooldown reduced on oh, no increase. So it's actually a nerf to borrow time. Uh, interesting on the hero. Also at level 20, eight second borrow time cooldown replaced with 85 damage per second borrow time immolation. So basically you get a radiance to your level 20 talent. 
Alchemist, we already covered. Ancient Apparition. Stun Duration Decreased. Okay, so basically a lot of this changes, a lot of these changes are going to be Stun Duration Decreases. If you're not familiar, they nerf every single stun in the game by about 20% it seems, maybe more, but it seems like about 20%. Yeah, so Cold Feet, Stun Duration nerfed. Aghanim Scepter Shard upgrade removed on Ice Vortex. Now deals, oh, it just does damage with the spell. However, the duration is way less at level one from 16 seconds flat to now 15 seconds at max, but six seconds at level one. However, it does 36 damage flat at max level, meaning you don't have to spend 1400 gold on a shard and you can buy something like a Veil or a Glimmer instead, and that's a big deal. However, the cooldown is also worse at level one, so this ability is pretty awful at level one. However, when you get it maxed out, it's way better. So the key here is getting this maxed out pretty fast and it's gonna give you the ability to kind of pushing creep waves, making something like a core AA, which I'm actually a fan of, much stronger. Ice Blast now upgradable by Aghanim Shard. Enemies hit by Ice Blast Explosion are stunned with the current level of Cold Feet for 60% of its duration. Doesn't stun debuff uh, immune enemies. Okay, so that's not bad. 60% of 2.8 is... Um, I don't know, like what, 1.6, something like that? I, I'm, I'm sure I got that about wrong, but like, let's say it's 1.6. That's not terrible. However, you need maxed out cold feet for that to be the case, but not bad. You know, having a stun on AA is pretty solid concerning how big Ice Blast can actually be. So not terrible, and that's certainly also going to set up for cold feet. If you get close to someone, you can cold feet and then shard Ice Blast them to set up for the cold feet, which is certainly very practical and definitely seems like a nice buff to the hero. Annie Mage. This is a hero that was becoming very popular in the Major. Base strength reduced by two, that's actually a lot, but he got HP regen 0.5, which is somewhat significant. Mana burn per hit significantly nerfed in terms of flat at max level. So it's instead of 28 to level one, it's 25. And at max, it's 64 to 40. However, they increased the max mana burn per hit percentage from 1 to 1.6 of level 1, and then from 3.4 to 4%, which I kind of feel like is a buff, I would have to imagine. It's a buff late game for sure. I think it's, a, it's an overall nerf in the early game, because heroes will not have as large of mana pools, but let's say against something like Odie in the late game, I would imagine 0.6% of his mana pool is way more than 24 mana. Probably an overall nerf if I have to guess, considering he especially lost two strength, but also blink cooldown was nerfed at level one, two, and three. Not, uh, it's the same at max level, but pretty significant at the other levels. And uh, mana burn plays a different sound when the target is below 50% mana, which is pretty cool. Okay, we talked about Arc Warden already. Axe. Stun nerf on counter helix, okay. And the counter helix damage is rescale, meaning it does more damage at level one, which is good because it was pretty bad at level one. So 20 more damage at level one, which is a lot for, your, for a pure spell, but it does 10 less at max. I don't know if, I would say this is probably a slight buff. Helps the hero's laning stage, which is definitely nice. No longer uses a pseudo random proc chance. Now triggers after a set number of attacks taken, attacks to trigger. Ooh, okay. So you can like really play around this in the laning stage because I, I would imagine this certainly includes creeps. Seven, six, five, four. That seems like a buff. Mm, I mean, it depends how many units you're calling. Hard to say. I, I don't know if this is necessarily a buffer and nerf. I would imagine it's probably about the same. I can't say for sure, but it's cool, right? It means one thing I can say for sure is that in the laning stage, you can pull creep aggro and then you can build up intentionally build up, let's say about five, six hits, which it probably has a counter. Uh, let's say it doesn't have a counter. You can kind of just keep track. And then when you get to about that spin rate, you can walk up, pull creep aggro near the enemy and intentionally spin. So, and, and for 80 damage now, which is a lot. So basically in the laning stage, you can really abuse this, uh, making the hero quite a bit better. Aghanim Shard no longer increases proc chance, now reduces the cooldown of counter helix to zero second. Oh, it has a cooldown. I forgot about that. What is the cooldown flat? It's very low. I think it's like 0.3 seconds or something like that. So yeah, I mean, maybe maybe this matters a lot that, that it doesn't have a cooldown now. So if you're getting hit by like an illusion hero, whew, you are going to spin like crazy. To be fair, that was kind of already the case, but maybe 
considering you can reduce the cooldown to zero seconds against high attack speed comps or illusion comps like a, like a Naga or like a PL, you're going to destroy them. Bane is now a universal hero. I'm not really gonna get into the stat changes, it's just too much, I'm gonna focus on other things. Just understand that every time a hero becomes a universal hero, it's going to lose quite a bit of base damage that like by a lot. However, for instance, Bane got damage gain per level. So like, I guess that's a thing now? Was that always a thing? Or did heroes get damage based on their base stats? I thought it was based on their base stats. Maybe, maybe heroes got that anyway. I actually didn't know that. I think they did, now that I'm thinking about it. Yeah, because, yeah, they did. Oh, huh. I didn't know. <laughs> That's funny. I feel pretty stupid. No longer reduces heal regen. Okay. In feeble, this is Bane's Q. Now deals pure damage per second, which, okay. First instance of damage happens on application, so it cancels blinks. Attack damage reduction increased by... 10% uh, in all levels, which is crazy. 70% damage reduction at max level is wild. Max co mana cost increased uh, by a ton. Oh my god, what the hell? Okay, to be fair, it, it's 120 mana. It went from 40 mana to 120. But to be fair, it does 12 pure damage per second for 9 seconds. And it reduces damage by 55% at level 1. So in the laning stage, having a spell that does 100 pure damage, about... More? More. 108 pure damage and reduces their damage f f by 55%. I mean, this is actually broken. Like, yes, 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 it's 120 mana, but at level one, you can nuke someone for 108, maybe 118. I I I'm terrible at math. Over 100 damage and they can't hit you back for nine seconds. That's crazy. Brain Sap now pierces debuff immunity. Nightmare no longer deals damage. Okay, so that's how they balanced it a bit. And it lasts for less time, but the mana cost is a bit less. Okay, okay. So maybe you're you're incentivized to take. I mean, here's what's crazy: you can take Enfeeble and Brain Sap and have a crazy amount of damage, and you can take Nightmare as well. I don't. I would imagine the Enfeeble doesn't wake people up from Nightmare. I would hope because it's Bane's damage. So you can do a lot of damage with this hero, up to 270 with Max and Feeble, and I'm a huge proponent of Max and Feeble. The cooldown of this ability goes down by a lot as well. It, it's, uh, it goes down to seven seconds. To be fair, it's a 28 second cooldown at level one, but at, at max level, you can do 270 pure damage and reduce their cast range by 30% and reduce their damage by 70%. And the cast range is an astounding 1100. This is a damn crazy spell. I'm saying it now. It's a crazy spell. People should be considering Bane, especially if unit heroes aren't as good, which they've been getting nerfed for a while now. They're still good, but they've been getting nerfed. This hero does a disgusting amount of damage now. Yes, Nightmare doesn't deal damage, but man, maxing and feeble. I would say the build is going to be something like maybe one point in Brain Sap just for the laning stage, maybe two if you're snowballing hard. Then you max out Nightmare, you max out Enfeeble, and Enfeeble, it was already a crazy spell, but whew, 70% attack damage, I'm gonna leave it at that. It's, that's definitely something to behold. Also, something to keep in mind as well is that at level 15, you get 13 Enfeeble damage per second, which is an extra, like, 150 pure damage, so I don't know, this hero is gonna be interesting to see. Batrider is also now a universal hero, which seems pretty broken because he gets extra damage just from Sticky Napalm, so he doesn't really need base damage as much as other heroes. Also, he got... 20 base movement speed. This hero better have gotten nerfed really hard to get freaking 20 base movement speed. He better get dumpstered. Otherwise, this is the most broken shit in the game. 20 movement speed on Bad Rider? Are you kidding me? He better not get bonus movement speed from his uh, Firefly. Oh, he doesn't. <laughs> okay. <laughs> that makes sense. It's still strong, though, because this means that you don't need Firefly active to get the bonus movement speed, and then you can use it during the laning stage before you even have points. So this is still very strong, keep this in mind. Okay, Sticky Napalm nerfed by quite a lot though, okay. Uh, yeah, so Sticky Napalm, much, much weaker uh, per level. Not as much at level one, but at max, four less is quite a lot. And the slow per stack is also quite a bit less. Flame Break is also a longer cooldown. It's more at level one, but less at max, which is probably good with his talents. Now slows enemies though, okay. So but by 25%, which is a lot, and the duration is five seconds making it way better at level one. I mean, this ability is actually insane at level one. It's a 25% slow at level one and for five seconds, which synergizes with the sticky napalm damage a lot. So that's, phew, the value point in flame break is insane. Yeah, the damage is also way more. It's 30. So this ability is 150 at level one plus 15 DPS. Oh, no, 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 it does. Okay, no, no, no. It does 30 damage on impact 
and then does 15 times 5, which is 75 damage, on top of the sticky napalm damage. Oh, no, 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 no. okay, <laughs> that's what it did before. But it scales per level now, but the duration used to be 8 seconds at max, so basically this ability is an insane value point. People are probably just going to leave it at level 1, uh, I mean, which is what you did anyway. It's much worse, I will admit, max now, because it doesn't last for 8 seconds, which was part of the upside of this ability. But it slows for 25% flat, which is super insane. On top of that, Firefly no longer provides bonus vision, which is a big deal. It also no longer provides bonus movement speed, but you have a 25% flat slow for 5 seconds, so do you really need the movement speed as much? It's still useful for farming and move around the map, but and you got 20 base movement speed, so eh, Batrider might be kind of broken. I don't know. It's weird. These are weird changes. It's hard to exactly feel out how this is, but the damage per second on his his Firefly also is 100 flat now at max, uh, and it's better at all levels as well. Quite quite a bit better. So it also, uh, Flaming Lasso does more total damage. It also ticks every 0.5 seconds. I don't know when it ticked before. But if that's more ticks, then that's more, way more damage with Sticky Napalm, so maybe it's even better. The Caster Angel is also buffed. The Stun Duration was not nerfed by that much compared to other spells. So they they didn't do like a flat number, seemingly. They they changed it depending on the spells. And the cooldown was decreased from 90, 120 to 90, from 115 to 75, and 110 to 60? Are they out of their crack? What the? This is insane. There's no way this hero is not busted now. This is so busted, actually. How do you, like, have the cooldown of Flaming Lasso at max? 30... What are you Is this it? This hero is so broken. He's so broken, actually. I, okay, Beastmaster. Wild Axes have less mana cost, okay. I would imagine all these universal heroes are probably weaker at level 1, so maybe they need to be buffed overall as a result? I don't know. Because that's seemingly what they're doing to, like, Bane and Beastmaster here. Dive Bomb Shard, nerfed, whatever. Stun duration on Roar, not really that much worse to be honest. To be honest, that one didn't get hit very hard. Uh, also, Drums of Slom is now a passive ability. Attacks from Beastmaster or a nearby unit he controls cause him to bang his drum, <laughs> dealing damage to nearby units and healing himself. Wow, this is potentially really strong. Under his control, and a portion of the damage dealt for a portion of the damage dealt. Every attack decreases the interval between drum hits from a maximum of three seconds down. To a maximum uh, to a minimum of 0.4 seconds between hits after 20 attacks which is not hard to do while farming if no attacks are made the interval gradually increase every one second using primal roar automatically adds 10 15 or 20 drum stacks which is a ton based on the level of primal roar drum hit damage 90 which is a lot heal from hero heal from creeps so every 0.4 seconds you can do 90 damage which means every second you can do Let's say every 1.2 seconds, you could do 270 damage. That is insane. Isn't this ability just the best farming spell in the game then? If it doesn't cost any mana and just constantly ticks for 270, assuming you build up some stacks, which is not hard to do. The only thing is it doesn't like, you have to build it up. One thing I'll mention about this axe is that if you get stunned or silenced, it doesn't turn on, which is the weakness of this ability. But that's why if you see the axe build, which uh, became popular to my surprise. I thought this ability was like useless. Turns out it's not. And now it seems really broken. Like really broken. Cause like for farming, it was a 40 second cooldown. That was the problem. In team fights, you got one of them. When farming, you got one of them. And then you had to be really f afraid that if you used it to farm, you wouldn't have it to fight. Cause 40 seconds is no joke. <sighs> uh, this might be hyper broken. I'm gonna say it right now. Beastmaster Ags build might be really, really stupid. Like really stupid. Also, Wild Axes costing 15 less mana is insanely good. This hero might be hyper broken, which it already was, but it might be even more hyper broken now. I don't know, but that's what it seems like. Max health damage on Blood Rage, uh, buffed, okay. Pure damage from Agon Bashard is now dealt as separate instance, okay, interesting. Cooldown rescaled on Rupture to be worse at level 1, better at max, and it does a slightly more damage. Now passively turns all of your overheal from your own abilities into a damage barrier. Wait, what? Oh, so if you buy your Ags, then when you like heal from thirst, you get 50% of your max heal. Oh, that sounds really strong actually, huh? So like if you buy your Ags and you farm or you get a kill, you get like a shield, which is, sounds very powerful actually. So maybe Blood Mist Bloodseeker is pretty good. Could have a lot of potential, I don't know.
I, I've seen so little of this, so I don't know. I'll have to try it out in some like mini games just to test it. Bounty Hunter, no longer mini stuns on Shuriken Toss, now applies 100% movement speed slow for 0.35, which is not terrible. That's actually kind of decent. Like 0.35 is not nothing, guys, in the laning stage. No longer disabled by silences. I didn't know it was. Instead, disabled by break. Okay. <laughs> Janata. Shadow Walk, attack no longer slows. Attack now stuns. Ooh, for 1.6 seconds. That's way better, actually. Way, way better, because you'd much rather have a stun than a slow. The slow was significant. Maybe it's worse in the laning stage, to be fair. Because, like, yeah, it's probably worse in the laning stage, but it's still a one-second stun, so not really. Aghanim Shard no longer grants charges. Now lowers Shadow Walk cooldown by five seconds, and so that's not that good. But you can use it on teammates, right? Oh, you can use it on teammates. So you can turn your teammate invis, and then they can come out and hit someone for a 1.6 second stun. That sounds pretty freaking strong, man. Because you can chain stun, because it lowers the cooldown, but you don't get charges, so you'd have to... You can chain stun. That sounds potentially really broken. Brewmaster is now a universal hero. Okay, I'm, I'm, <laughs> I'm done talking about these. Void Stance is now part of the basic ability of Drunken Brawler, and it gives you status resist or slow on attack. That's pretty cool, so you can chase people better if you need to. Earth Brew... I'm not reading that. I, I can't... I can't be bothered. I'm sorry, Brewmaster players. I can't be bothered. I cannot... This is too many... <laughs> It just seems like small number changes. I cannot be bothered. If, if you're a brew player, please say something in the comments if it was a buff or not. It seems like a buff because that hero is not that good. Bristleback now provides Warpath stacks with each Quill Spray released. Whoa! Taking excess damage over the Quill Spray threshold is maintained, and multiple Quill Sprays can trigger from a single source of damage. That's a massive buff! Isn't that going to make you Quill like insanely crazy? And you can just get Warpath stacks from clicking... Oh, you get Warpath stacks from taking damage. This is an insane buff! Because now you're just gonna quill, like let's say someone Laguna'd you, you'd proc once, but now that Laguna can make you proc like three freaking times. What, how much damage is the threshold? 200? Oh my, it's that low? Holy, Bristle might be insane how much you're gonna proc now. These spell life steal builds like some Kaya Sandra Bloodstone? <sighs> I'm telling you now, I'm trying this shit out. I'm gonna stack some ancients and hit some devious timings. And Vanguard's in a good place right now, and I don't, I mean, I don't know if it got nerfed. I'm going to cover that in the next video, which is going to be items, but who am I? Now is a universal hero. All right, I can't, I can't be bothered. Insatiable Hunger, base damage rescaled to a percentage of your base damage, making it definitely worse in lane. Uh, maybe it's good later on if you scale, because you're a universal hero, so you can buy a ton of stats, and that works well with this base damage and satiable hunger, so the key to Brood is going to be buying um, stats, which you tend not to really want to do on the hero, so I guess it's kind of a nerf. Uh, I got him short base attack damage reskilled from 12%, flat damage to 4%. Okay, maybe that's a ton, actually. That could be, like, a lot. What is 4% of 100? That's 4. Quick math. Nah, that's not that good. That's actually, the shard's not really better. It's actually worse, I think. Okay, health regen decreased by... <laughs> Three at level one, <laughs> and the damage on spawn spiraling is way worse. Also, your level 15, which is integral to moving around the map as this hero, it's the spin web restore time from 10 to my, uh, 10 seconds to seven, which is a big nerf. Also, your 20 talent got nerfed, but you took the anyone other one anyway, so that's not that's whatever. Kind of, it's whatever unless you're going right click, which maybe you do now. I don't. I mean, these are major brood nerfs. I will admit, I still think the hero is probably okay which is like sad to say, but going from five HP regen to two, I honestly think at this major, I, I, I'm, I'm going to say it, I, I'm surprised more people didn't try letting the hero through. I don't think it's as broken as people thought, but now it's definitely not nearly as good. It's it's way less damage, I think, on Insatiable Hunger in the early game and way less HP regen, which is pretty crazy. Host on duration decreased, okay. Cast point and double edge, slightly better. Strength return damage in nerf double, okay, whatever. Centaur is like the same hero. Chaos Knight, Stuns, okay. Critical life steal is quite a bit better. So this hero life steals a lot more, but you get half from creeps. Okay, so it's better at fighting heroes, worse against creeps, which I would say is probably a buff, right? Because you already heal. Eh, nah, it depends, because you would actually use the creep wave to heal in the laning stage. So this depends. I mean, it's it's 15% at level one healing from creeps instead of instead of 20 which is when you would mainly use it to heal. That in level three, eh, it's tough. It's tough. It becomes really bad against creeps in relation to heroes at max level, but uh, it's it's still good. It's good for fighting, so I don't really know exactly how this plays out, but I would say it's probably about the same hero, I would I would guess. Chen is a universal hero. Now grants Chen gold equal to Creep's bounty when dominating it. Oh, that's cool. So Chen gets a lot of gold now. And, and neutral camps scale with time. Major Chen buff. And you get Creep's bounty, which is huge. This hero have already farmed timings crazy fast, and now it just gets the gold. Aghanim Shard now also adds one level to upgradable abilities. Wait, what? Maybe Chen is crazy because they buffed the neutral creeps. 
and you get gold now when dominating, uh, which is insane. All right, we talked about clinks, clockwork. Power Cogs now applies a magic barrier to all allied units inside of Power Cogs. The magic barrier gives up to 200 health, 50 at level 1, scaling by 50. Knockback duration decrease, so the chain stun's a bit worse. Uh, knockback effect now interrupts most forced movement abilities. Exceptions are Batrider's Flaming Lasso, Centaur's Hitch a Ride, and Tusk's Walrus Kick. Okay, so it cancels, like, Spear Chart. Uh, I think Spear Breaker could go through it, and Primal Beast could go through it. So it, it, it's like a nerf to certain interactions. It's a bit weird, but it does matter. Rocket Flare also slows movement speed. Wow, by 100% for 0.4. That's that's actually a big deal for like helping people close the gap. Like that matters a lot. That will be the difference. However, they also nerfed the duration of hookshot stun. So the hero getting pretty hit hard on the stun, like hit harder than, than other heroes. Because how you have to look at it as a percentage nerf, right? Like Beastmaster went from 4 to 3.5. I think that's less of a percentage nerf than 2 to 1.6. I'm not exactly sure, but I'm pretty sure it is. Oh, Clockwork also lost his level 20 Power Cogs leash units in side which was really broken yeah th that was a really broken talent it only got 75 rocket flare damage which is good with the ags but i, I would say this is a net negative that level 20 talent was pretty broken because i think it went through bkb crystal maiden got two base damage oh frostbite now also uh, d does damage in quicker intervals which i don't really know if that matters the freezing field cooldown was buffed so okay see a little bit better nothing crazy Dark Seer is uni Universal Hero. Ion Shell ticks slower. I don't really know what that means. Uh, but okay, about the same hero. And they nerfed Normal Punch. Why? Dark Willow is also Universal Hero. Max damage increased on Shadow Realm at all levels. 30 more at level 1. Allied units can now target Dark Willow when in Shadow Realm. Oh, that's good. So you can save her a lot easier. That's, that's a big deal. There's a lot of situations where you would want to do something with Dark Willow. Whether or not it was like Force Her or Glimmer Her or whatever. And you just couldn't. So this helps out a lot. And her stun was nerfed, not surprisingly, by kind of a lot, it seems. Dawnbreaker stun nerfed on the Q, and then the landing stun nerfed as well, and nothing really outside of that. Dazzle lost good juju. They nerfed the shard. Shadow Wave now upgradable by Agnum Scepter. Okay, so allows casting Shadow Wave on enemies to release an inner inverse Shadow Wave. The inverse wave bounces amongst enemies, dealing damage to them and healing any ne nearby allied unit heroes for 100% of 150% of healing and damage values of Shadow Wave. Dazzle also performs an auto attack on every enemy hero hit by the inverse Shadow Wave, which is good with Poison Touch. Okay. Bad Juju, ability reworked. I don't think you would buy an Axe for this inverse Shadow Wave, right? Doesn't seem that good. And you lost good Juju. Ability reworked. Whenever a unit is affected by Dazzle spells, they temporarily gain or lose 1, 2, 3 armor for 8, 10, 12 seconds. Can be activated to decrease the remaining cooldown of other abilities by 4, 5, 6 seconds and items by 3, 4, 5 seconds. Casting bad juju costs health, not too much though. Each cast increases health cost by 50% for 30, 25, 20 seconds. How much can you cast it? Bad juju cannot kill Dazzle but still can be cast without the sufficient HP. And the cooldown is 3 seconds. So you can just kill yourself to cast more spells? This seems insane, a 3 second cooldown to reduce spells by six seconds. So you don't have good juju, but you can just spam this. And then I would imagine you buy mech and holy locket so you can heal yourself and you heal yourself with shadow wave. So you basically button mash and get an insane amount of CDR, like a ridiculous amount of CDR. And it works on items, which includes, I would imagine, hand of Midas, meteor hammer. So this seems, we gotta test this one out, boys. This is a tester. This one, this one seems really abusable, if I'm not mistaken. They also said that the base damage was not nerfed on this hero, which means it must have insane base damage, if I'm not mistaken, right? So yeah, the hero has 50 base damage, and if I buy a branch, if I buy six branches, which is not even that much of your goal, it's only half, you get 11 damage, right? That's crazy. Uh, so you have 11 damage. What is this hand thingy? Why do I have 126 hands? What is that? But let's say I buy a Midas, okay? So I have Midas and like Greaves or whatever. Okay, so if I level up, let's say I level up to level six, right? And I'm casting my spells, right? I'm casting my spells, I Midas a creep. So let's say I'm Midas and then I click good, good Juju level one. It should reduce the cooldown of Midas by three seconds, but it should cost me some health. Did that work? You can reduce Midas cooldown, you can keep healing yourself. It doesn't cost any mana. Oh, it costs you health, but no mana. So I can Greaves and I can... What is going to be a cooldown of Midas? It's like zero. You just have to keep healing. So the... the... Oh shit, it keeps stacking. Oh, okay. 
Ah, <laughs> uh, I see, okay. So you gotta let this, uh, go away. So if you don't let it go away, it destroys you. I see. So if you want to be some sort of real troll somehow, I guess you can keep doing it somehow if you're, like, hiding in the jungle or something. Otherwise, you have to let the bad juju reset. If you don't let the bad juju reset, it's going to kill you. And it takes a long time to, um, to go away. So if I click it once, takes a long time to go away so you can't really button mash this but I mean I guess you kind of can right like in my head what you kind of can look to do with this is let's say you head into the jungle and you're, you're full-time jungling right you can kind of start to just button mash your abilities you can reduce the cooldown you can like do something like meteor hammer on the creeps and you can kind of just keep screwing your health and it's gonna get to the point where your bad juju is like nearly going to one-shot you but as long as your HP regen is high enough, you can kind of keep yourself at one health. And obviously this is insane, If you and if you get found, you're going to die. But at the same time, you're never going to run out of mana with like an item build like this. You're never going to run out of mana. You're going to be able to farm like a madman with the amount of shadow waves you can spam because you're lowering the cooldown. And this is only level 1, keep in mind. Right? Keep in mind, this is only level 1. And so the amount of Midas's you're going to get at max level uh is is in like really insane right like i mean this can get this can get crazy the, like the cooldown reduction is what six seconds on items yeah it's no it's five yeah it's five so let's say i midas i midas i lower my health and then like i mean the amount of time you can get this shit back up it just means you're gonna have to kind of sit in the jungle and i'm currently doing fifty-four thousand damage to myself which it seems to cap out on. I guess it doesn't expect you to have more than 56k HP, which kind of makes sense. But, uh, okay. I mean, this is a fascinating concept. I, I don't know how this is going to play out, but the key is going to be to stack uh, active items, which it already was the key on Dazzle, but, you know, you buy your Glimmers, you buy your Four Staff, you buy your Locket, and you're going to be able to reduce the cooldown. To be fair, with Greaves, you can't... It doesn't really work with Greaves, though, unfortunately, because... It, uh, it has a built-in cooldown that that activates on the heroes, so I don't want to talk too much about Dazzle because we got to move on to a lot of heroes, but this is a cool one for sure. I mean, the farming potential with Midas Meteor Hammer. All right, now we have Death Prophet. The shard was nerfed. Spirits now deal more damage the closer Death Prophet is to the target and need to return back to her in order to attack again. I have no idea what this means for the damage, and I'm not going to test it out right now, but we'll see in a future video. Thunderstrike, Aghanim Shard, Rework. When cast on ground, Thunderstrike now lies dormant, not striking for up to 5 seconds. If an enemy comes within range, oh nice, it's a techies bomb. Thunderstrike attaches to it. If no enemy hero comes in range, it strikes the ground. And Aghanim Shard also increases the number of strikes by 2 in the cast range to 1600. Very weird. I guess you can set up Thunderstrike bombs. Glimpse has been nerfed in terms of damage. Sounds good to me. This spell is so stupid. <laughs> Kinetic field cooldown also nerfed by one second at every level. Still probably a good hero, I will admit, but decent sized nerfs. Doom, who's a pretty broken hero, has been nerfed. Stun duration decreased on Infernal Blade, making chain stunning with War Stomp a little bit harder, or much harder, actually. Aghanim Shard base stun duration also nerfed. Okay, but the hero is still very good. Okay, Doom is still broken. <laughs> Very cool. But with the amount of creeps on the map, I guess Devourer is less valuable, right? Technically, still good though. Strength gain increased on Dragonite. This hero was good though. All right, they nerfed the stun, not surprisingly. While an Elder Dragon form applies Corrosive Breath or Frost Breath effect corresponding to the current form. Oh, that's interesting. Nothing crazy. Okay, so Dragonite, still a strong hero and he got a strength gain increase. Drow Ranger, her shard is now granted by Aghanim Scepter instead of shard, and the damage has been increased. The max stacks also increased and the regen reduction increased. That's way too expensive though. However, you get a Glacier if you buy the Aghanim shard, you get a Glacier. Drow Ranger creates a heal of ice beneath her, pushing enemies away from it. Any unit that stands on the hill gains <laughs> gains bonus attack range and high ground advantage. I guess that's kind of good. It cannot miss and gain flying vision. The front of the hill obscures vision and cannot be moved through. Okay, that's pretty cool. I'm going to test that out quickly. We're building a glacier, boys. Oh, shit. It's really small. <laughs> but you can hit from far away. Look at this attack range. Oh, like. <laughs> I mean, it's not bad. The bonus arrows per wave. Wait, what? Bonus arrows. Oh, you get bonus multi-shot arrows. All right, that's pretty good. The problem is you don't get your shard now. You have to buy your axe, which is like, it's really expensive. That's not worth it, I don't think. So it's a big nerf to draw against like the heal her heroes, but the shard's kind of legit, right? You get an extra multi-shot. Wait, what? That didn't look like an extra multi-shot. Does it mean like, oh, it shoots five instead of four? Is that what it means? Uh, that's not that good. 
I thought it meant like another wave. Eh. I mean, at the end of the day, it obscures their vision, so like... But they're gonna see you if you click them, right? So it, I, I think it... I think they can see you if you click them, though. Yeah, so you can still... Alright, it's not that good. It gives you... It gives you bonus range, but like... Would you rather have this or hy hypothemia? Am I saying that right? I, I, whatever, you know what I mean. I think you'd rather the other one. Earth Spirit, Aghanim Shard Upgrade Remove, now gains one extra Stone Remnant every charge every fifth hero level. Now deals 1.25 damage against creeps on Boulder Smash. Okay, it's good for securing creeps and farming a little bit. Stun Duration lowered on Rolling Boulder. Okay, that makes sense. Now upgraded by Aghanim Shard. Okay, so you basically get the Geomagnet Grip with the Shard, which is pretty good. Earthshaker Fisher reduced, Aftershock reduced. Elder Titan, 0.5 base regen, which is actually a lot. Stomp damage and... Stun reduced, which makes sense. Ember Spirit, base one armor. Yes, this hero is already good. Did he need that? Now stacks additively with other sources of magic barrier, but it nerfed the magic absorb. I don't really know what this implies for the hero. I would imagine Ember Spirit is still a pretty good hero in the pro scene. In terms of pubs, eh, only if you're good at it. Agadim Shard now increases the maximum number of enchanted units from one to two. That is insane because enchanted units are insane. And they, and they said they buffed the creep scale now, and Ench was a broken. Oh God, Ench is gonna be so OP. And at level 20, you can get 30% enchanted creep health. Oh my, Ench is just gonna terrorize these games with this shard and level 20 talent and these buffed creeps. He's gonna be a terrorist. Oh my God. gracious. All right, Malif is Thunderation. Okay, whatever, it's just Thunderation. Time lock, okay. Duration of Chronosphere, it's what you'd expect. Decreased, it's a stun. Now freezes ability and item cooldowns of anyone trapped in Chrono. Oh wow, that's a huge buff. So Chronosphere is like a buffed version of Time Dilation. Now prolongs the duration of Time Dilation as well. Oh, that's a huge buff. Oh, that's cool. So massive buff to, to Void. Like, that's really huge. I mean, you are never getting spells off against Baseless Void. <laughs> that's brutal. And it, I would imagine it increases the duration of Time Dilation, which also increases the damage of Time Dilation, which is pretty damn good. Inkswell nerfed pretty heavy, uh, but the bonus movement speed is 20% instead of 12 at level 1, which is insane. And the cooldown is better at level 1, so helping the hero's laning stage a lot. Dark Portrait Illusion is now a strong illusion, which means you can't mana drain to kill it, which is really great. And Spell Immunity re replaced with Debuff Immunity with 95% magic resist. So basically, you cannot kill this Dark Portrait. This Debuff Immunity thing is very confusing, I will admit. Yeah, so I don't really understand the new BKB. I'm not gonna lie, guys. I don't wanna harp on it because I'm kind of not covering it right now, but if I click BKB and I get stunned, you take 50% of the damage, but you still don't get stunned. So, I don't really know. I don't really get it. I, <laughs> It still seems really broken if you ask me. I, I don't I don't know what I'm missing. Homing Missile on Gyrocopter nerfed cooldown. Nerfed Tar, what the hell? And they nerfed the Aghanim Shard. The duration of flat cannon was increased and the max attacks increased by one. Probably not good enough to make this hero viable as a carry at all. If anything, it just nerfed the support, which wasn't even that good. So weird changes. They nerfed Hoodwink stuns. Aghanim Shard no longer allows to cast inner fire while disabled. Wow, they nerfed Huskar. Hard. That was one of the... His shard was strong because you could cast it while disabled. Jeez. Spell immunity while leaping replaced with debuff immunity with 50% magic resist. Okay. <laughs> they just kind of has to have to specify that like BKB has been changed or like things that kind of gave BKB seemingly are changed. Cold snap duration decreased from 0.4 to 0.3. Okay, that's the stun. Aghanim shard upgrade removed. Effect moved to level 20 talent. Okay, that's uh... So what is the shard now? Oh, it's EMP. Now upgradable by Aghanim shard multiplies burn damage by 1.5 times and make it pull every enemy hero into its center at 100 units per second. Oh, that's pretty good. So it's like a it's like a weird vacuum and it does a lot of damage. That sounds pretty strong, right? It's like a good amount of control. It's a big radius. That sounds actually uh, quite legit, right? So I can see it. It's going to do quite a lot of damage. Uh, it kind of makes EMP more reliable that it's going to hit, considering it pulls people in. And uh, you just pair this with like a cold snap or an ice wall, and uh, it can be very powerful, so... Probably not bad. I mean, yes, they're losing the Chaos Meteor Shard, which was very powerful, I will admit, especially lowering the cooldown, but at the end of the day... Uh, so you, you are losing the uh, lower cooldown on Chaos Meteor altogether because they said they moved it to level 20, but they really didn't. They just made the level 22 Chaos Meteors. Oh, and you lost the Chaos Meteor damage! Oh, why would they nerf Invoker? This hero's not good. This was kind of the selling point of the hero, the level 20 Chaos Meteor damage. They replaced it. Ah, that's terrible. 
Oh, this hero sucks. What the hell? Ayo, with Aghanim's Scepter, this ability can now be activated to explode the spirits, after which they begin spawning again. Cooldown is increased by 20%. Sorry, by 50%. Cannot be activated if the ability is on cooldown. So, I guess you can kind of just, like, spam the spirits now? And if you get really close to someone, you can blow them up. I don't know if that's good or not. I, I, that's going to have to be tested. You can basically blow up the spirits all at once, which is potentially a lot of damage if you're in melee range. And it's certainly good for farming. Max stun duration on, on Akiro. Burst damage increased on his uh, E by a lot at max level. It's it's 15 more damage per second at max. And it does... Uh, oh, but it does less damage to buildings. Okay, but it still does a lot more damage to heroes, which is not bad. Mana cost on Macro Pyre increased by 10 at all level? What the hell? And the damage per second decreased at level 1 by 10, which is okay. Not enough to kill the ability, but still not bad. Liquid Frost lost its mini stun as well, and the level 20 talent got hurt a bit. Jug got one base damage. Oh my god! Spell immunity re replaced with debuff immunity plus 80% magic resist. Okay. Oh, this means you can't BKB TP. Oh, you can't BKB TP out. Because you still get, like, hit by the stun thingy. It doesn't stun you, but you get hit by it. You can't BKB TP, and you can't BKB channel stuff. Oh. So it's like a really hard nerf to split pushing. At least if you're gonna BKB TP. It's a really hard nerf. It's a super hard nerf to heroes that would, like, Jug, who relied on it. Doesn't this just kill Juggernaut, then? You can't spin TP. This completely limits this hero's ability to play aggressive. Like, throughout a lot of stages. This is terrible! Rip! This hero sucked already, and now it's really awful. Uh, Blinding Light now ha is a basic ability that does damage kind of a lot. It has a pretty big radius. Cast range uh, reduced, though, at level 1. Better at max. And the cooldown's pretty long. It does a lot of damage, though. It's not bad. Solar Bind, which was kind of a strong spell, now requires spirit form. I feel like it was better... Okay, but I mean, you get it in spirit form. And it's way stronger. Oh my! It does 10% slow. And it was 4 at level 1, 8.5 at max, but still better at max. The duration is worse, however, you basically get a, a buffed version of Solar Bind just by clicking your ult. Which, I don't know if that's a buff or a nerf, I'm not really sure. Probably? No, 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 it's a buff. It's a buff because you would want Solar Bind anyway. Like, I think early game you would prefer... So... I say that, but... No, 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 it's better. It's better because you would rather a maxed Solar Bind at level 6 than a maxed Blinding Light. This is way better, actually. I'm pretty sure this is a huge buff to the hero. And the cooldown is only 14 seconds flat. And it's 800... Wow. Pretty sure this is a massive buff to call. I'm pretty sure. All you need is one point of blinding light to one-shot critical place with max illuminate. And you, get a, and you get a maxed out solar bind. Probably a huge buff, not gonna lie. Tidebringer no longer disabled by silences. That's good. Oh, but it's, in, it's disabled by break, which is probably better. Uh, you know, it's definitely better. Okay, Torn Storm. Uh, whatever. Cook is probably still kind of bad. Overwhelming Odds now has an area of effect ability centered around the hero, no longer increases movement speed and instead provides flat attack speed bonus that doesn't require the ability to hit enemies. Oh, for how long? Doesn't really specify, but probably pretty long. Radius increased uh, to 600 flat, but it, it's around your hero. Now automatically triggered upon the dual cast if not on cooldown. Well, that's cool. So you can like blink dual and you get 140 attack speed by maxing your Q, which means you don't need press the attack levels, which is actually huge. This might be a huge buff to the hero. And you can cast it during duel. Oh, this is really good with duel because you would kind of want to max press the attack for the damage during duel. But now this makes it really easy because you don't have to press the attack beforehand, which makes it way easier to blink duel. And it does a lot of damage and you don't have to max press the attack. You can max your Q and your E, where you could certainly not do that in the past. And uh, I mean, you lose the bonus movement speed though, to be fair. So basically, the bonus movement speed is on press the attack, which means you give bonus movement speed when you're saving allies, but you can't give bonus movement speed to allies, which I think generally is not that big of a deal, kind of. it's almost, I think it's better because, like, let's say you want to press the attack to save someone, you, you would rather give them 22% movement speed. So that's kind of good. It's easier to blink dual people. However, dual duration is nerfed. So, I don't know. I'm not really sure that if this is a buffer or a nerf. I, I think it's... I don't know. I really don't know. Because losing movement speed on overwhelming odds makes it way harder to kite in and out during the laning stage as well. So, hard to say. Very hard to say. Split Earth, okay. Movement speed on Lich. Whatever. Nerfed by a little bit. Apparently now you can Sinister Gaze Creeps and do 250 damage per second. And it lasts two times longer. So you can farm non-ancient creeps with Sinister Gaze. I, I mean, it's definitely nice. It's good. Life Stealer also cannot BKB TP. Why are they doing this to these heroes? It's like killing these heroes. I'm assuming you can't BKB TP, right? I'm going to check this for you guys now because this is a big deal, right? So let's say I click Rage. Okay, I get my, I get my teleport scroll out. 
I'm gonna max out the rage so I have enough time to do all this. So we have our maxed out rage. We try to TP. Venger's gonna now stun. No, it doesn't cancel it. What? How does this make any sense? <laughs> I don't understand, it shows that- why would it even bother letting you stun them then? Or like, why would it show the stun animation? You're not getting stunned. Why would it bother showing it then if you're not getting stunned? I don't understand. What am I missing? I'm missing something for sure. I have to be missing something. I literally am so confused. What am I missing, guys? Someone explain, please. Lena, base armor increased by one. Stun duration decreased. Okay, cast range increased by a lot though. And flame cloak now grants max fury souls on activation, which is the axe. Eh, eh, it's still bad. Earth Spike on Lion, damage increased uh, by 5 damage to level 1. Nerf stun, projectile movement speed increased by a lot, making it easier to hit. But the mana cost was nerfed a bit at level 1, slightly better at max. Cast range on Hex buff, which is okay, not bad. Lone Druid is a universal hero. I don't know if that includes the bear, I don't know how that would... I guess the bear didn't get stats. So, I guess it it probably changes almost nothing, I, I think. Likely changes very little, I don't, I don't exactly know, but the base damage... I don't know, maybe these heroes have such low base damage now, where like, it's very hard to last hit with them, like, in the lane. I'm not really sure, it seems, uh, quite difficult. Oh, but the damage on level 1 decreased by 4. But, oh, but they still have... It's weird, it's like damage on level 1? I don't know, it's very confusing, we'll see how this plays out, but not exactly sure. Lucent Beam stun duration, okay, whatever. Lunar Blessing, attack damage, bonus allies decreased? Oh, ha! Huh. Luna gives only half damage. To allies. No, that's not true. She gives half at level 1, but it's from 28 to 21 at max, which is only a 25% decrease. So not, not really much of a nerf, but she gets 200% of the buff. That's, instead of uh, 28, she gets 42, which is a lot, right? 42 damage is quite a bit more than 28, so nice little buff to Luna, I kind of, right? She's giving a lot less damage to allies, especially to something like a Visage. It's quite a nerf, but I don't know. There's going to be a lot of creeps on the map now, and Luna loves that, so maybe this is a Luna patch. It might be. Lycan is a universal hero. Uh, wolves are better. Now also fears enemy-controlled units, non-heroes. Why does Howl fear enemy-controlled units? So Howl is just a counter to uh, to unit heroes and, like, Lone Druid Bear? Does Lone Druid Bear count? Can you just fear Lone Druid Bear off cooldown with Howl? That would be so stupid. <laughs> that would be such a hard counter to Lone Druid. You just fear him whenever you want, including when you don't see him during nighttime. Okay, uh, Empower is better in terms of mana cost. So is Shockwave. It uh, now can be upgraded by Aghanim Shard, increases the range by 400 and wave speed, causes Shockwave to return towards the caster's original cast location after reaching max length. Hitting enemies. Okay, so I, I don't even. I guess this helps you pushing creep waves. I don't know. It seems kind of bad though. RP stun worse. Horn toss is uh, granted by Ags, but it stuns, which means you can use horn toss to set up for skewer again. But you gotta pay 4,200 gold, which you can't do on Magnus. This hero farms fast, but it's a lot of gold compared to buying something like Aether, Blink, Force. Greaves, like, you know, you gotta trade something out, so. Marcy is a universal hero. Her Q does more damage at max, and uh, landing distance increased. Oh no, landing radius, so I guess the, the damage it does is better. It's good for pushing in waves when you Q the range creep. Uh, stun on her Q is worse. Minimum jump distance decreased from 450 to 150. Minimum jump distance. Oh, so you can hit people, so you can't really juke it by- So one thing you could do to juke rebound was move close to what she was trying to jump on. But now you can't really do that. So that's a buff to rebound for sure. Aghanim Shard no longer allows setting the ability on autocast. Now allows Marcy to jump off enemies and provides her with movement speed bonus. Doesn't specify how much, but okay. Aghanim Scepter Pulses now also silence. That's actually pretty good. The Ag Scepter Pulse silence actually could be something you buy, because it's a huge radius and it silences everyone. It's uh, really strong in some cases. It's like, it's almost better than Basher in some cases, because while it doesn't work against BKB, it uh, guarantees that you silence, so it's pretty damn good. Spear of Mars, stun duration nerf, nice. Make the hero even worse, and that like super giga cucks Mars, because he relies on the stun to do damage with the ult, so thank god Mars, still the worst hero in Dota. Medusa, we talked about Medusa. Meepo, poof can now be put on autocast. If the ability is on autocast, when cast on a target, all their Meepos also cast poof to the target automatically. If able. I don't know if that's good though, because that can grief you when like farming, kind of. M when cast on ground, all Meepos accept the selected one poof to the location closest to the nearest Meepo. 
I don't know if that- maybe it just makes, like, noobs be able to play Meepo. I think it does. Divided we stand, Aghanim Shard upgrade removed. Now, Dig is granted by the Shard, which is really strong, because Dig is an insane ability. If you don't know what it is, you become invulnerable in the ground for 3 seconds, and it heals 35% of your total health. So you can save Meepos with only 1400 gold. To be fair, you don't get any stats out of it, but, uh, still, this is a- I think it's a big buff. And you get Mega Meepo! Now a new ability granted by Aghanim Scepter. Primary Meepo mounts all of their Meepos in a 600 radius around him on top of his shoulders. That sounds painful. While in this form, he gains 50% of the other Meepo's stats. That's a lot and can fling them at enemies, dealing 225 damage and slowing them. Uh, while active, Earthbind generates additional nets and poof deals bonus damage based on the amount of Meepos riding on top. Casting Dig cancels Mega Meepo. Has no mana cost. What the hell? So you can just have like one Giga Meepo? So I can play Meepo without knowing how to micro if I buy an Axe. That's what you're telling me? Mana cost on Starstorm has been decreased. Mana cost on Arrow has been decreased. Aghanim Scepter, uh, Aghanim Shard. Okay, that's so pointless. Stun Duration on Boundless Strike. Jingu Mastery, bonus lifesteal, nerfed at level 1. So this ability is better at max, but way worse at level 1. You should really go on this hero at level 1. Morphling, base strength increased by 1. Attribute shift no longer grants bonus agility and Aghanim Shard bonus agility move to Adaptive Strike. Now grants bonus agility, same values as attribute shift before. So that makes this hero quite a bit worse at level 1, to be honest, right? The hero is quite a bit worse at level 1, because you, you don't want to skill Adaptive Strike at level 1, right? Now grants bonus strength, the same as attribute shift, okay? So you just have to take one point in it, I think. No, no, no you need to max it out to get all of the attributes. So that's a huge nerf to Morphling, I think. It depends. Early on, it's a huge nerf because, you know, but you only take two points in attribute shift, so it's kind of a buff eventually. It's weird, I don't know. I think it's a bit of a nerf to uh, Morphling's laning stage, which is which is good. The hero needed a laning stage nerf, in my opinion. Aghanim Scepter effect now steals an additional 20% of all stats when targeting universal heroes. I don't know what, exactly what that means. Okay, we talked about Murta. Naga Siren lost a bit of mana regen. I'm sorry, HP regen. Can now target sleeping and vulnerable units even without Aghanim Scepter. Wow. So it's very easy to set up on heroes when you sleep them with Ensnare, preventing people from blinking out. That's actually a huge, I mean, this is a huge buff against heroes like Ember and Quop, and because they, I mean, especially heroes like Ember, where you could never net them uh, when you song set up on them. Now you easily can. I mean, this is a huge buff against certain matchups like Any Mage as well. You can easily song and net him, and he cannot get off Counterspell. Like, I mean, this is massive. However, they nerfed the damage of Riptide only at level one. It skills back up to the same damage, which doesn't seem too bad. Considering you, I guess you don't max this ability, so. Channeling is now, okay, whatever. Nature's Prophet, I hope they didn't kill my boy. Cooldown increased on Sprout by one second. Mana cost on TP increased, and the cooldown was nerfed by a ton from 62 to 65, but most notably at max from 20 to 35. Are you kidding me? That's 15 seconds, nearly double. After teleporting, Nature's Prophet now gains three, six, nine, 12 stacks of bonus damage. 6 damage per stack, so what, I get 18 damage? Every attack turns the stack of attack damage into stack granting 1 armor for 15 seconds. What does this even mean? Tree Enthration decreased from 60 to 50, and the damage decreased from 15 to 11? My Treants hit for 11? It's the same at max, but oh my, they're so bad at level 1, and you can't stack them as easily. You can't like have 4 Treants nearly as easily, or ever. And the duration is just 10 seconds less always, which is way worse for farming and pushing in lanes and so on. You don't get the bonus damage on your ult, which hurts, but you get it when you TP, but you can't TP nearly as much. I don't really know how much this teleport damage is. Okay, so at level 1, I TP in, and it's going to give me 18 damage for actually quite a long time. 15 seconds, and if I hit, but if I hit, I lose the damage, but I get an armor. So, okay, so then at max, and you get a talent for it, you can take a talent for it at max, which seems pretty good, but at max level, I TP in. It makes TPing in much, much worse, though, because, like, you're, you have a big cooldown. So I hit for 72, which isn't, it's not that good. And you get, you still only get one armor, and you lose the damage pretty fast. So, I mean, you hit for 72 every time you TP in, which is, I mean, it's a lot, right? It is, it is a lot, and it does give you armor, which is, like, kind of nice. How many stacks? You get 12 stacks. It gives you a good amount of armor, but it, how long does the armor last for? Oh, the armor runs out at the same time, so you're not going to get really much armor out of it because you have to hit a lot. So, eh, I don't know. 
It's a nerf because like you got damage from Wrath of Nature. So like you just basically got way worse trance. Like they're significantly worse. There's way worse trance. You barely can TP now. It's a 35 second cooldown. Sprout is worse. They just killed my boy. I don't think the hero is like worthless, but for weaker trance, way weaker trance, worse sprout, nearly double TP cooldown. I just don't think that's a, even a remotely close trade-off. I mean, I know the hero was good and whatever, but uh, I don't know. A little bit sad because this is my favorite hero, and I'm pretty sure this is a pretty decent nerf, but eh, we'll see. Movement speed on Ghost Shroud, rescaled, okay. Uh, Death Seeker ability reworked. Necro turns into it. No, I like the old shard. Necro turns into a fast-moving large death pulse flying towards the target's position at cast time. Once he reaches said position, the death pulse spreads to nearby enemies and allies. Can be blocked by Lincolns. So basically, you shoot yourself at them. So it's the same ability, but you shoot yourself in, which is worse for farming because you have to get too close, but it lets you close the gap. I think it's kind of a nerf, to be honest, because I don't think you really want to go to the location. It's it's a buff if you're trying to chase, It's but I don't think generally you want it to do that. I, I don't know. It seems like a nerf. Aghanim Scepter on Nightstalker re uh, reworked makes Void an area-targeted spell, applying its effect on all enemies in 450 radius, even when they're invisible or in fog of war. Also creates a Void Zone in the chosen area. While he's in the Void Zone, Nightstalker's abilities along with Void are empowered to their nighttime version. Okay, but it doesn't specify their nighttime version. Okay. <laughs> kind of weird. Now deals damage on start of being impaled instead of landing. Okay. Mind Flare, new basic ability. New basic ability. Deals damage to the target equal to 2, 3, 4, 5 times their intelligence, plus 30% of damage dealt by Nyx to the target uh, in, in the past 15 seconds. That's interesting. Cast strange. Wait, what? So this is just a spell, then what did you lose? Oh, you lost mana burn. So you don't burn mana, but you do a ton of damage, it seems. So if you get really tanky, you can reflect a lot of damage. <laughs> I don't think this is good. I feel like burning mana was like more useful, but hard to say. They also nerfed Carapace, now removes 50% of the target's max mana on hit? What the hell? If, if you hit someone with Vendetta, they lose 50% of their max mana, that's crazy. Now increases Mind Flare cast range by 400, okay. Omni Knight, Degen Aura ability removed. Hammer of Purity, now upgradable by Aghanim Shard. Uh, allows Omni Knight to be healed for 30% of damage dealt by Hammer of Purity every 6 seconds. Omni Knight's next attack automatically fires a hammer, hammer of purity. Oh, that's pretty strong. That's actually very strong. This is way better. I, I flamed Valve very hard for buffing Degenora at some point in some patch. Maybe they heard me. Maybe they just realized. I don't know. But uh, this is very cool. Every six seconds you hit and you shoot a hammer of purity. That seems quite practical. It's good for farming. Um, you know, this is a... Uh, you heal off the hammer of purity, which is nice. And you get to just like click it and it does a lot of damage like with auto attacks. So this is a nice shard. This is good. This is a cool buff. Very cool. Fate's Edict now only disarms enemies. Wow. Now only provides magic resistance to allies. How much? Why doesn't it specify? Cooldown increased from... Okay, and the cooldown is nerfed pretty hard. So I don't know how much magic resist gives. It probably should have specified, but whatever. It's good because you can you can make your uh, right clicker spell immune, but they can still right click, which is pretty damn strong. Aghanim Shard upgrade, remove the scepter. Oh, but Reign of Destiny is the shard. Oh my god, this ability is insanely strong. How is it the shard? Wow, that is insane. For only 1400 gold, you can do 400 total damage and you amp healing on your teammates and reduce healing on enemies. This thing is insane for only 1400 gold. Oracle might be kind of broken, I'm not gonna cap. This shard is nuts, guys, I'm telling you now. It's really good. And for 1400 gold, third of the Aghanim Scepter cost. Aghanim Scepter upgrade removed. Now uh, you can upgrade Essence Flux. Damage that brings Outworld Devourer below 20% health triggers a strong dispel. Additionally, Outworld Devourer consumes all of his mana to provide a damage barrier equal to 50% of his maximum mana. I mean, that can make you really, really tanky, to be fair. And like, it's hard to burst OD because he like strong dispels seemingly all the time, but you can be broken. I mean, the old OD Axe was so good. So I feel like I can't tell if this is good. I mean, 50% of your max mana can be a lot of health. Now deals damage to all units, treats the units without a mana pool as if they had zero mana. Okay. Pangolier now is a universal hero. Damage on shield crash has been nerfed. Rolling thunder, stunderation is worse. Cooldown is worse by about 10 seconds at all levels. By 10 seconds at all levels. He is, uh, can, you can cast spells on him. 
Talent, Swashbuckle Rain. Okay, so I would say Pangolin is still probably a good hero though. Even though it keeps getting nerfed, it's probably still a good hero. And it also got one base armor, which is pretty nice. It didn't have the best armor. It wasn't bad, but not great. Fenwanser, 75 attack range. That's a lot. Good for the laning stage. Make sure you can hit from further away, keeping you in position. Agon of Shard upgrade moved to Scepter. Spirit Lance now bounces twice on enemies. It's really expensive, so can't be good. Juxtapose, upgradable by Aghanim Shard, allows Juxtapose to be activated to create one illusion at Phantom Lancer's location, giving him instant invisibility. What the? <laughs> so you can go invis, that doesn't seem that good. Phoenix, Stunderation nerfed and is a universal hero. Cast point decreased on Onslaught from 0.15 to 0. That's cool, so you can like really chain stun with it now. Stun duration nerf though, max channel time increased, so it's a bit worse in terms of using it. Time to max charge, also a bit worse, but it doesn't have a cast point, so it's about the same. Minimum charge distance decreased from 300 to 100, so you really can- I think you can chain stun with this then. No longer reduced by damage block. Now Pierce's debuff immunity. Oh, so Pulverize Pierce's debuff immunity. I don't know how good that is. It does a lot less damage, and it stuns for less, and the cooldown's worse. I, I don't really know what this imp- This whole like, de the debuff immunity is weird. Because you can- that means you probably can still stun them, right? I mean, you can pier- it pierces, so maybe, uh... So this hero is kind of broken then. If you BKB, he can still pick you up. So major buff to Primal Beast in that regard. Puck, intelligence gain increased from 3.5 to 3.8. Aghanim Shard now passively adds 20 bonus ma magic damage to Puck's attack. That's a lot. That's pretty good, actually. 20 magic damage for the Shard. Not bad for only 1,400 gold. Mana cost on uh, your Q is better. Aghanim Scepter upgrade removed. That's good because it was absolutely horrible. Almost always. Break stun duration decreased. Okay. Now upgradable by Aghanim Scepter. All enemies affected by Dream Coil are attacked by Puck every 0.6 seconds. So it's Dream Coil rapid fire, right? But not nearly as strong. Attacks originate from the Dream Coil center and do not re require Puck to be nearby. You know what? That has a lot of potential late game. It's 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 basically Dream Coil rapid fire, which was a talent, but you don't have to be inside of it. And uh, but it doesn't hit that fast. I think it's worse than the other. I think it's worse than the rapid fire. Pretty sure. 0.6 seconds doesn't seem that good. It's not bad, but not that good. But yeah, I mean, you can hit a lot. So yeah, I mean, Puck's still a good hero overall. It's like just generally buffed. None of this seems like a nerf. So Puck's just very strong, at least uh, at a pro level. I don't know about in pubs. <laughs> Projectile speed. Whoa. Hook can be heard in Fog of War? Oh, that's weird, but it goes really fast now. So it's probably impossible to react to, to be honest. It's probably a buff. Yes, you can hear it coming. So like you can blink maybe, but like in terms of the laning stage, 50, 150 extra projectile speed, this thing is gonna fly at you. You're probably not gonna be able to react. They nerfed the axe again. They buffed the cast range of Dismember, which is actually nice. And uh, they, duration, the, they nerfed the duration, which hurts, hurts a bit, so. I can't imagine Pudge is good, but I guess a buff to Pudge support, kind of, sometimes. Except when he's in Fog of War. Who knows? When targeting allies or, or self no longer increases magic damage taken, instead provides and- Ooh! I love Pugna, this is good. So you can decrep your teammates, and they don't take more magic damage. Instead, they get amped heal amplification, so you can heal them more, which is something you'd kind of want to do. Healing for allies is no longer based on the damage dealt by life train. Wait, what? Then what is it based by? What is it based on? What? Huh? Then what is it based on? Is it better? It's the same number. It, does that make it better or worse? I have no idea. I really don't know. I really, really don't. <laughs> I, I do not know. I really have no idea. Queen of Pain. Aghanim Scepter emitted a Shadow Strike. Expiring. Now also damages the target. Cooldown rescaled. So Razor is worse at level 1, which hurts his already bad laning stage, but he's slightly better at max. That seems like an uh, overall nerf. I don't know. Kind of weird change. I feel like this hero sucked. Sleeping Dart ability removed. Oh, smoke screen upgradable by Aghanim Shard. Enemies in the smoke screen have their armor reduced by seven and cannot be targeted by their allies. Oh, that's crazy. So you can't force staff your teammates. Kind of nuts. I mean, unfortunately, Sleeping Dart was one of the best abilities in the game. So replacing that is a hard ask. But I mean, seven armor reduction is a ton, like a lot, a lot. And not being able to be targeted by allies is pretty damn insane because it means they can't be saved by like Astral Spirit or, or Oracle Ult or Grave or just any any save spell. And there's a lot of those in Dota. So, you know, Omni Knight, Warlock, yeah, I mean, Force Stab, Glimmer, right? Like, pretty crazy actually how much this could matter and make Ricky a better core. I would say as a core, I mean, 7 armor reduction seems pretty great. So, now it gives an experience bonus for kills and assists. Kill bonus, 150. Wow. Assist bonus, 100. That's a lot of XP, right? 150? I guess like it's for a kill though. But for an assist, you still get 100. 
So this hero can level up like crazy now. I don't know, maybe that's broken, honestly. How do you... They're just getting be like over leveled as shit. But to be fair, there's so many creeps on the map and Ricky doesn't take advantage of that at all. So kind of hurts. Uh, okay, Rubik's Thunderation, Bro Strikes Thunderation. Now always applies the current level of Caustic Finale to enemies even without Aghanim Scepter. That's insanely good. Now always applies to enemy... Oh, it's to enemy heroes. So if it was creeps, it'd be like comically broken, but it's to heroes, which is still good though because it slows them, right? And now Sandstorm is upgradable by Aghanim Scepter. Every 0.2 seconds creates two... 65 radius burrow strike spines at random locations. One stuns enemies and deals damage equal to the current level. Each one stuns and does damage. Maybe that's good. It, it seems kind of random, but it's every 0.2 seconds, so maybe that's good. I mean, the fact that you always apply Caustic Finale when you stun people is insane. Like in team fights, being able to apply Caustic without having to hit them is like a big, big deal because this ability is crazy when it explodes. Okay, cooldown decreased on this weird ability that no one understands. Da damage on a Shadow Demon upped by 100 at max level, but it's the same in level one. Cleanse, charges. Okay, so you don't really buy the Ags now and the Shard is better. So, okay, Shadow Demon is honestly better. Shadow Fiend no longer slows turn rate on hit. Thank God. Oh my God. <laughs> Stacks Lothon death decreased from 40% to 30%. Okay. Every enemy hero killed near Shadow Fiend further improves the armor reduction by two for 20 seconds. Oh, that's cool. Duration is refreshed with each hero kill. All right. So in team fights, you can get quite a lot of armor reduction. Kind of. It's not, not, not crazy. Fear duration per soul hit decreased from 0.9 to 0.7. It was way too long. So I agree with this. All right. So Shadow Rays, you can turn around now. You still get slowed though. But you can at least turn around. That's nice. Targets improved on Ether Shock from 1 to 3. Oh, that's a big buff to Ether Shock. So you can hit two heroes for 140 damage, which is insane. Hex is worse, but the cooldown's better. Uh, and same thing for Shackle, kind of. Not not with cooldown. Just uh, mana cost is better, which is nice at level 1. So this hero, this hero is much better in lane. Much, much better in lane. And it was already a good laner, kind of. Arcane Bolt now leaves behind a debuff for 5 seconds that increases Skyrath Mage spell lifesteal against the target. So you can heal with your Q, and then anything else you cast on them also heals you. So you can heal like crazy. Also, Mystic Flare does the same damage in less time, so that's buff. This seems like a big buff to the hero, right? Because you can like heal a lot in the laning stage by just queuing people. You you like Q them and W them, and it's going to heal you for like 30. I guess it's not that crazy. It's more of a mid-game thing, right? Because like if you Q someone and then you ulti them, you're going to heal for like... Isn't that kind of insane, actually? I mean, this hero dies really fast, but like in terms of being able to turn kills, maybe you buy your shard now and you can get like really, really tanky. So let's say I'm at this HP and I queue this guy. So the first one doesn't heal me, but then I think everything I cast on him after does. Yeah, so that healed me for quite a lot. Can I get two stacks of this? Because it lasts for five seconds. So can I have two stacks? No, you can only have one stack. But look at that. Look how much I'm healing. Wow. I mean, to be fair, that's maxed out. So it's not it's not that insane, but it's certainly not. It's far from nothing, right? It's like far, far from nothing. Nice little change. Big, big, big help to the hero for sure. And they made the ulti just better. So Bash of the deep. Oh, Slaughter just got killed. All right, cool. <laughs> Slark damage decreased on Q. Death Shroud cast range decreased as well. Okay, still good spell. Still a good hero. But the damage on Dark Pack hurts at level one a little bit. All right, Snapfire, just less stuns. Universal hero. Uh, Concussive Grenade does 200 damage now instead of 25. <laughs> Okay, so Concussive Grenade does a lot of damage. I mean, it's a lot of damage. Like, no joke. Desolate no longer ignores evasion. The attack must now land for Desolate to do damage. Wow, so Spectre way worse against heroes with evasion. Like, Spectre used to be a counter to PA because he couldn't miss if she was alone. And she often is alone. Now Spectre is, like, countered by PA. I mean, okay, it went both ways because PA's shard, but, like, if you isolated a PA with Manta Spectre, you annihilated her. Now you certainly do not. Aghanim Shard reworked. Now you can activate Dispersion to give you 100% Blade Mail for 5 seconds. Only increases the outgoing damage, doesn't mitigate the incoming damage. So you can get Blade Mail for 1400 gold. To be fair, you don't get the damage or the armor, but you can get double Blade Mail, right? <laughs> you can literally get double Blade Mail on Spectre. That's probably kind of crazy, right? Spear Breaker, Planner Pocket makes you take no magic damage. Uh, Storm Spirit's Q is a bigger radius. However, Overlord, Overload does less damage at level 1, but better at max, which is probably an overall buff. The stun's worse, of course, though. Sven, stun worse. The Cleave went from 25 to 40% at level 1, so way better as a harassing and farming tool at level 1, which is nice. Then you can, like, afford to put points in, in it a little bit later, and you can take points and stun or warcry for the landing stage and not feel too bad about it. Uh, and it gives you bonus strength, just passively. So at level, at level 2, if you take Cleave, you just get 2 damage and... 40 health and some HP regens. Pretty good. 
Uh, cooldown on Warcry is better. No, it's worse, sorry. But the duration is better, which is probably a buff. Techies, Agnum Scepter upgrade, removed to the Shard. What did that even do? I'm not going to look at that, but it's probably good. Anytime they re they move an Aghanim Scepter to a shard... Oh, you can give it to allies. Pretty good, honestly, for a shard. Oh, but, wait, 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 but then what is it on Blastoff? Oh, Blastoff just stuns now, but it doesn't silence. Oh, what the hell? Your Blastoff doesn't silence. I mean, but it used to silence for a long time. I mean, to be fair, now it's a stun for 1.4 at max level, which is not bad by any means, but... And it lets you set up for bombs way better than Silence would. So it's kind of a buff because you don't need to buy your shard. Then you can buy the shard and use it on allies. Then you can use Taser on allies. And Magic Resist Reduction debuff now stacks independently. I didn't... I thought it did stack independently. Is that like a big buff? Does that mean you can get way more Magic Resist Reduction? Oh, but the Minefield Sign is way worse. However, they gave Minefield Sign an Ags. Increases effect radius to 1,000 and duration for 4 minutes. When an enemy hero gets within 200 units of the sign, the entire 1,000 radius area becomes a minefield for, <laughs> for 10 seconds. Enemy units will take 300 damage for every 200 units moved. Minefield, what the hell? So you just can't even go near this thing. Minefield area. What's the cooldown? So you can just put this down. You buy axe and you put this thing down and then no one can go in that area for 10 seconds. Hey, this is pretty insane. I mean, it's impossible to go high ground, right? I think. I don't. This must be insane. It probably looks insane. TA got 40 base attack range, that's nice, but some mana cost on refraction, not bad. Um, okay. Terrorblade. Reflection now slows attack speed. Wow, that's a big deal. Demon Seal. Wow, that's a big, big deal for the laning stage. Makes trading way better with Reflection. This hero was already obnoxious in the laning stage. Now it's just like, ugh. Attack speed and movement speed increased. Fear duration decreased. Okay. Tide Hunter Anchor Smash does more damage at level 1, but worse at max. Uh, no, I'm sorry, that's the mana cost, so it's worse at level 1 by 5, which is nothing, and better uh, better at max, which is overall buff, and the attack damage was overall buffed by 5 at all levels. Ravage, uh, of course, less of a stun. Reactive armor is now upgradable by Aghanim Scepter, which means they lost the Ags on Chakram, which was one of the best Ags in the game, so it's kind of a nerf. Can be activated to gain max stacks and 200 HP barrier. This barrier gains 100 HP per second and increases by... 75 HP per second for each enemy hero within 600 radius, up to a maximum of 800. Doesn't count illusions. After 8 seconds, Timbersaw loses the barrier and deals damage to every hero within 600 radius equal to 200 plus the remaining barrier HP. I mean, maybe this is insane. Like, you just get like a gajillion armor. It gives you a gajillion armor, a ton of HP regen, a ton of HP per second. You can get 800 damage, but I mean, this might be insane. Like, it's like so much health. And it does... A lot of damage at the end of it as well so it's like instead of buying like an armor item you can buy ags but to be fair like shivas and lotus which were the armor items you would buy were good for the hero because of the active so i don't know whirling death makes universal heroes lose five percent of each attribute okay interesting so it's pretty good against uh it's actually very good against uh universal heroes base agility increased by four agility gain increased why did tinker get four base ag <laughs> Okay, hits way faster. Laser cooldown is nerfed by two seconds, which is a big nerf to this hero's laning stage. Rocket's cast range nerfed, which is a kind of big nerf to that, but it got a little bit more damage than max. A, kind of a nerf to Tinker, I think. Very weird. Cooldown on tree grab, worse on tiny. Cooldown on toss, worse. Bonus armor, better. Bonus damage, better. This hero's, eh. All right, this hero, I'm pretty sure tiny's like kind of trash now. I Never pick this hero in pubs. Don't pick it in pubs. Trian. Got some talent changes, nothing crazy. Battle Trance, now caster can use items during the effect. <laughs> okay, that is a big buff. That's a big buff. Because now you can click Battle Trance, and then you can click BKB late, which is nice. Because sometimes you would want to Battle Trance, but like, the problem was, you couldn't click BKB during it. So if you decided like, maybe I need it, but I don't really want to use it right now, but I want to Battle Trance on the person, you just like had to BKB. Now you can Battle Trance and you can late BKB. You can also Defusal people, you can Abyssal people late. You can like really kind of switch things up um, and it's certainly good. Let's say you're against Nature's Prophet and he sprouts you. You can Battle Fury out of the trees. So you know what? It, this is a very, very good change to Troll Warlord. I personally, people hate the ulti a lot. I personally don't hate it. You can say I'm crazy for that. It does a ton of damage and it roots you through BKB. At the end of the day, that's very high impact. It solo kills people very easily. Now you can use items as well. It's very high risk, but it's very high reward. It's very hard to use, but frankly, that's a skill. And you gotta know your matchups. I think it's a cool hero. Hate me? You can say what you want. Tusk? 
The snowball speed is worse on snowball. Mana cost on Underlord on its Firestorm is worse at max, not by a ton. Atrophy Aura, worse per little, rescaled. It's better at level one, but worse at max, which is, I would say, not much of a change. It probably evens out. And the cooldown on Fiend's Gate is 10 seconds less at all level, which is actually a good sized buff. So Underlord, probably about the same hero, maybe slightly better. Tombstone now upgraded by Aghanim Shard allows one allied hero to bunker inside of the tombstone. Allies can bunker by pressing R and B on the tombstone. Oh, right mouse button. Bunkered units cannot leave the tombstone for three seconds after entering. Unit that left the tombstone cannot re-enter it. If Undying decides to enter the tombstone while another ally is inside, the ally is forcefully evicted. <laughs> Undying also receives the grab ally ability, which bunkers a hero to the new nearest tombstone within 300, 400 range. This ability is also present on the tombstone itself, so you can save people with tombstone. It's kind of good, right? Because you can like put people inside if they get stunned or something like that, and save them. You can like hide inside of the tombstone. Pretty cool! It seems really strong actually. Like very, very strong. Aghanim Shard removed. Ooh, but the cooldown on Flesh Golem is 140 seconds. That's brutal. Uh, all right, I see. I mean, I don't know. The hero is probably still good, but the, the cooldown on Flesh Golem is rough. Ventral Spirit is a universal hero. Stun is worse. Bonus base damage. I guess base damage, they nerfed the base damage bonus because they're afraid people are going to stack stats and this hero is going to be too good because it's a universal hero, I, I assume. Now a passive ability granted by Aghanim Scepter. Poison Nova is a passive ability? What the hell? Creates a ring of poison upon death of Veno or an enemy hero infected with Venomous Gale. Also triggers a Venomous Gale dispelled for enemy hero. Enemies hit by the Poison Nova take non-lethal damage over time. Okay, so it's the same ability, but basically if someone's Gale, then it gets purged, it shoots your ult. Or if you die, it shoots your ult. Or if someone dies with Gale, it shoots the ult. But you need an Axe, which is expensive. And you have a new ulti. Infects an enemy hero with a deadly plague that does an initial burst of damage and additional damage uh, over time based on the unit's max health. Which sounds like the old ulti. Enemies in a radius around the target are slowed, with values decreasing the further you are from the enemy. When the target dies, or the debuff expires, all enemy heroes are infected with a non-communicable version of the plague. Duration 5 seconds, initial damage 200, 300, 400, max HP is damage 567, that's a lot. 5% of your health for 5 seconds is 25%, 35 at max, that's a lot of damage. This ability is going to usually do about, probably about 40 to 50% of your health. It slows for 50%, it slows the people around you. However, the cooldown's really long. So basically, this ability is way better as like a put it on someone and do a lot of damage spell. It's way better early game. I would say it probably scales worse, but to be fair, you have a lot of late game damage. Because now, you can, and it seems to kill, right? So you can you can use this late on someone. It, it does, it can kill them with the max HP damage. So it certainly seems, um, oh, but you have to hit them with it so you can miss. Oh, so if people are around them, they also get hit by it. This could probably do a ton of damage. And you can also buy eggs and have your old ult. So you can have two ults. It's probably, I mean, it might be really good, honestly. Hard to say, but it might be really, really good. Cast range on Viper Strike buffed, needed by a lot, too. I, I respect that, though. Okay, Grape Shield Mana Cost buffed, Soul Assumption Mana Cost buffed. Wow, this hero getting a lot of buffs. It was just nerfed, like, a bunch. Now it's better again. Like, big, big Mana Cost, which is a big problem in the hero. Aether Remnant on Void Spirit, pulled, uh, duration decreased. Okay, now stacks additively with other sources of physical barrier. Aghanim Shard upgrade removed on Warlock. Now upgradable by Aghanim Shard, creates an imp for every two seconds of channeling. These imps last for 15 seconds and hit people. They have health, one armor, and they explode. When killed, imps explode, dealing 60% of their max health as damage to enemies within a 400 radius. Imps continuously seek out the closest viable attackable target. So it's basically your upheaval becomes tombstone. Maybe a better tombstone, I don't know. Weaver got one base armor. Aghanim Shard Mark. Please get rid of this. This Weaver Ags Shard sucks. I'm just going to say now, it sucks. Please get rid of it. Cooldown decreased on Geminite attack from 9753 to 75.5. So it's way better at level 1. No longer disabled by silences, but by breaks. So Geminite attack, way better in the laning stage. Weaver overall, way better. He got one base armor, and the cooldown went down by 2 seconds at level 1, and is 0.5 better at max as well. This hero can harass way more in the laning stage, as it has better armor and way more Geminite attacks. So, um, super, super nice for Weaver here. Like, really much better laner. Much, much better laner. Now, I'm a fan of Weaver, so I'm, I might play quite a bit of Weaver. Uh, Shackle Shot improved projectile consistency. Now always Shackle's the closest target behind the unit Shackled. Okay. Fail stun. Okay. Nerfed. Stun. Nerfed. Okay. Uh, damage on, on Power Shot increased by 20 in all levels. That's actually kind of a lot. Kind of. Winter Wyvern, uh, health burn rescaled on his Q. It does w nothing at level one now, but so this ulti, the hero's ulti is still stuns for a long time, but it seems kind of crap. 
Why did they nerf the Q at level 1 so hard? It seems really bad. Like, really bad in the lane. This hero's laning stage is, like, pathetic. Like, really pathetic. I don't know. Weird. Witch Doctor base damage on Cask from 40 to 50, which means it's gonna do a lot of damage as, as it continues to balance, but it's not that big of a change. Wraith King? We're coming to the end, guys. If you made it this far, I just want to say like the video. You guys are the best. I'm honestly- I, I'm not falling asleep because this is so interesting to me, but man, this is so many patch notes and it's tiring me a little bit. So if you made it to this this far and you watched all of it, you are insane. You are a real one. You are crazy. You really want to learn the game of Dota, which I respect. Lifesteal increased on Wraith King. Wow, this hero gets way more lifesteal against heroes. It's half versus creeps, but it's nearly double anyways. And skeletons now deal, oh, skeletons deal way less damage to buildings. Probably an overall buff though, because you heal so much against heroes. So much against heroes. Like, literally, you heal like crazy against heroes. 50% lifesteal is nuts. And it's steel, it's it's actually more lifesteal at level 1 against creeps anyway by, uh, by 1. However, you do way less objective damage, which, like, way less, so, kind of hurts. However, they buff the crit by an extra 30% at max, which is a big deal. So, I don't know, kind of a buff to Wraith King. They also made his ulti uh, cooldown rescaled from 200 180 to 130 140 to 100 seconds at max. Can now be cast by Wraith King on himself to die and resurrect if he has the necessary resources. So what, you can die early? Now always spawn skeletons to attack each nearby hero. Okay, so basically it spawns skeletons. It spawns one skeleton, then two, then three, depending on the level. So basically, I mean, you never have reincarnation up in the late game, though. Your Agon of Scepter reduces the cooldown to back to the regular, and the respawn time of every dying hero under its effect by 10%. I mean, pfft. you need Wraith King Ags in the late game, that's all I'm gonna say. I mean, Wraith King has a great Ags, to be fair, but man, 100 second cooldown and reincarnation in the late game means you have to really have a lot of downtime when this hero just sucks, so... It's kind of tough. I eh, I want to say this hero is almost nerfed because of that. I get what they're doing here with these skeletons. They do a lot of damage, don't get me wrong, but like in the late game, these skeletons were, will terrorize the supports, but man, I don't, I don't know. Static field ability removed. I mean, it really needed that. Are you, are you sure about this valve? The Q does less damage. Oh, so the, the arc lightning does less damage, but it also deals uh, three, four, five, six percent of the current enemy health is damaged. So art lightning does a crazy amount of damage. Mini stun duration decreased, but it, but you don't get that damage on other here on the other spells. So I don't. That seems like a nerf, I think. However, you don't have to buy shard, and you do way more damage with the Q over time. Heavenly jump now always moves Zeus forward. You don't want that. Sometimes you would want to go in place. I would say 90% of the time you want it to move forward, maybe 95, but I don't know. No longer increases enemy cast time. Now, okay, so Zeus has a different shard new passive ability increases zeus's attack range by 100 zeus attacks create art lightnings that deal 50 percent of its damage and illusions get it though too <laughs> manta style zeus so zeus gets attack range with this shard and every time he hits it shoots an art lightning that does half damage so what are you gonna buy treads shard on zeus and you're gonna click people treads hurricane bike you're gonna pike them and then arc lightning them five times doosh, 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 doosh. oh and that's the last change there's also miscellaneous stuff, so... They removed Captain's Mode from rank. Doesn't China play that all the time? Alright, that's gonna be all for the heroes. If you want to learn more about the items... Well, first of all, let me just say thanks for anyone who watched full through. If you made it to the end, maybe this was more like an hour and 30 minute video. I don't know, hour and 20. But either way, if you made it to the end, I, I appreciate your support. If you watch the whole thing, you are insane. I love you. And, um, yeah, I'm, I haven't even covered all of the patch. I haven't covered the matchmaking changes. I didn't cover the items for the neutral creeps, which I'm going to do in the next video if I can stay awake. <laughs> uh, I didn't cover the user interface. Thank you guys so much for watching. I'll see you in the next one. I'm excited for this patch. Hopefully you're just excited as, excited as I am. And I'll see you in the next one. Peace. And that's all, but remember, before you leave, come on, before you tune out, subscribe to the Game Leap website where we are going to help you get to the next rank. If you're stuck, click the link down below, and I'm out. Peace.